Welcome, my friend. Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode. This episode is part two on my build series for my solar setup for the cargo trailer that I've purchased here recently. Let's roll the intro and get into it. This video is sponsored by Renowned Cargo Trailers. It's now time to do the very first thing you should do once you buy uh, custom lithium battery packs, these individual cells, and that is to balance, top balance the all the units. So I have 16 of these that I need to unpack, but I thought it might be interesting for you to see how these things are packaged. Here's what the cells look like after you get them out, and they all come in these individual little packages like this. The arrow indicates the top of the small box. And each one of these cells are in a little individual plastic bag like this sealed in here and then you can just take them out one by one and it has the little cap here on the top and that's what it looks like and the box itself it has all the foam beads around the edges and then it's individually sealed in this large bag so inside you get the individual boxes that you can take out like so. And there you go, all 16 cells here, all lined up. So now I've got to get them put together with the bus bars according to all the other videos in the diagram for getting it balanced. So let me get that set up. So the first thing you want to do is take these little bus bars here, connect everything together on all the sides so you get a continuous connection on the positive and a continuous connection on the negative with these little bus bars that are provided and then use the nuts that are provided and screw those down. You re really should be able to use a, a torque thing to get the right amount of pressure. You can also do a very, very careful job not to over tighten these so you don't strip out uh, these posts that are in here, otherwise you've ruined your battery. Here you can see all 16 cells together. That's a lot of lithium batteries. This is the equivalent of about four battery-borne batteries. So the next step after you connect all of the lithium cells together is to get a DC power supply so that I'm able to top charge or uh, get all of these topped off at a charge that's equal. So basically you want to raise them up from 3.2 or 3.28 where they're at now up to 3.65. Now there's lots of videos on how to do this. Will Prowse videos are probably the most popular and that's what I've gone by. So you've got to buy one of these gizmos to bring it up. Let me show you that. Here is the exact same uh, power supply that Will Prowse uses in his videos. And so you buy this and this allows you to give yourself adjustable power up to 30 volts. So I need to dial this in at 3.65 and then charge the battery bank over here so that all these cells are 3.65. And that's basically how you do a top balance. So you turn on the unit over here and it has a voltage and a current control here. Both are on zero right now. So you want to bring the voltage up to 3.65. So I'm going to try to raise this up here and it's not doing anything. Let's try this. Okay, so you do have to have some current going through it. I'm going to max out the current. Will Prowse says I need to max out the current and you've got to bring this down to 3.65. So now bring it up. There's seven. This thing is really, really sensitive. I'm barely moving this knob. You can see it here raising it up. It's on zero, zero. Now it's jumped up to four and then seven. Now six, I'm barely turning the knob down. 6.2, I've got to get it down to 3.65. Five, four, whoops, it dropped down below four. Now I'm bringing it back up, it's still on zero. Now it's at seven. 4.2, 4.8, and then it dropped down again. All right. All right, I tried working on this for probably another 20 minutes, another 15 attempts. I was never, ever able to get it in the 3.65. Um, it drops down from about 4.7 
all the way to zero immediately and I could never dial it into that and as you go up it jumps from zero to seven. So I would say don't buy this unit or maybe this one that I have is defective. Uh, I'm going to look around. It's a couple of days later, I ordered a new unit from Amazon to charge up my lithium batteries to get them topped off to do the top balance. And so today I'm going to show you the old unit and compare it to the new unit and why this new unit is far superb and why I recommend getting it over the other one. I'll put a link down below in the description to both units, the one I recommend as well as the one I don't. This is the old unit that you saw here just a couple of days ago. And this is the new unit. You can see in comparison that the new one is a little bit bigger and has more knobs on it. Instead of two controls like here, you have four controls here. So the advantage is you have a uh, what they call a coarse control. It's a large uh, difference in voltage versus a fine control to dial it in. So that's going to allow me to dial in the voltage much closer as well as with the current. So that is the advantage with this new one. So turning it on here, uh, it's at 4.6 now and I just turn this fine control to turn this down to 3.65 and this is much much easier to do than the previous unit. Let's see, a little too far. Let's go back up. It still takes very small, minuscule movements to get it exactly right. It also has an extra digit in the LED display here versus this one over here that only went out by one digit. So this would only do 3.6 versus this one here will give you 365. And then I will attach these leads to the batteries and let this go for several hours until the current reaches zero. And that's what I've been instructed to do by the Will Prowse videos. And so now it is charging. You can see this is a 365. I just have to wait until the current gets to zero. So this number here, the amperage should drop from five down to zero once it hits the, that level. So I've got to wait several hours until that happens. It's been 24 hours and so I want to give you an update. This is taking forever, unlike the video Will Prouse posted where he said it should just take a few hours. It's been 24 hours and this battery bank is so big and my charger is so small that it's barely budged. It's hardly done anything. All right, I have my voltmeter here. This is charging right now, and I'm going to measure the voltage while it's running. So I put it on here, and I'm getting 3.31. So I started at uh, 2.8. Uh, so I started at 3.28, and now it's after 24 hours. It's at 3.31 so it's hardly moved like uh, maybe three one hundredths of a volt here's the charger here it's plugging away giving me 17 watts per hour uh, trying to get it up to three six five six four right there so given how slow this is going i contacted scott out in san diego who's been my mentor in helping me put this system together and he said, yeah, those batteries when you bought them were only at a partial charge, which is why this is taking so long. I didn't realize that. So I'm bringing it up to a level that he recommended, probably let it go overnight. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to break down this giant uh, bank of 16 cells into the battery components as I'm going to be using them in the uh, cargo trailer build and then I'm going to use my new Ames charger which is a shore power charger to ch fast charge these all the way up to their top level and then after that I'm going to measure each individual component after a cool down period make sure that they are all equal if they are exactly on then I will be done 
If not, then I will need to top balance them again using this uh, little unit to bring them up just slightly more. So anyway, that's where things are after one day of charging. It's been probably about 10 days since the last clip you just saw, and that's because I have an analysis paralysis. I just get stuck and I panic because I don't want to destroy very expensive lithium batteries or other electronic components. And so initially I could not find the lugs that I wanted or I did, I found them at Lowe's and they were like eight dollars for two lugs and that was crazy expensive so i ordered them from amazon and i got a whole pack which i'll link down below and this is what the pack looks like here and i'll put a affiliate and i'll put an amazon affiliate link down below but then once I got that in, I couldn't find my crimper. I lost my crimper. And so I ordered a new crimper and then uh, it was supposed to arrive yesterday. And instead of arriving, Amazon sent me a note saying it was going to be another week before it arrives. So I canceled that and then I was going to go down and buy one. And then I ended up finding my crimpers. So it's just been a cascade of crazy little delays like that. So here I am about 10 days later. Let me show you what's going on. So this makes a 8S2P battery pack. So that's eight in series and then two in parallel. So all of these are in series here and then they're connecting side to side to connect two eight packs together. Anyway, so then I have a new wires these are six gauge going over to the Ames charger this is shore power charger and i'm going to be plugging this into the wall over there i've been told by scott my mentor through all of this that i probably have about a 10 hour charge period to bring these all the way up to 28.8 volts so that is my project for today is uh, wiring this up monitoring it checking it every few hours just seeing how it's doing and wait until these batteries are fully charged well it's several days later and this has turned out to be more of an ordeal than i expected to do a top balancing of my batteries let me give you an update on what's going on i've taken this part uh, several times to balance the batteries and i found that the these particular batteries you can put these uh, threaded rods in and line them up really nicely um, I ended up having to put this on a short power charger to get the batteries up to full charge. They were not fully charged when I purchased them. You can see that now I've reached zero here. So this is fully charged. We're at 3.64. And so I just need to pull these apart and measure the individual cells and make sure that they're all balanced. And then this will be done. I can assemble my final battery now. And this is the short power charger here. By the way, I've been doing all the wiring onto this piece of plywood of all of my components, and it's almost done. It's coming along really well. Now I've pulled out all of these bus bars that go in here in between, and I pulled all those off and then bolted these so that I can measure them individually. One of the problems I was having was with the voltmeter before I was using this Harbor Freight voltmeter over here and I purchased this new one which is uh, from Fluke and this is an Amazon one. I'll put a link below to the Fluke one but uh, the Fluke is a very high-end, very reliable and it measures out to a thousandth of a volt. So there you can see that's 3.646 3 which is exactly what it's supposed to be and I measured all of these cells just now going down one by one using the probes and all of them are within one thousandth of a volt so that's perfect so the last step is to assemble the final battery to put it into a battery box and this is going to be two uh, 24 volt batteries uh, that I'm starting out with with room for a third one that I hope to add later this year and that will give me the equivalent of six Battleborn um, batteries. So that's pretty big. That's a very, very nice size for my new rig, and I'm excited for that. So next, let's get started on building the battery box. Finally, after many days, I think I've finished my lithium battery bank, other than a few details, which I'm just finishing up. But I wanted to show you the battery box, and I just need to attach a few more things. But 
I don't think I'm going to get that done before I hit the road. I'm trying to leave Florida tomorrow. So right now I'm in the midst of putting everything in the back of the cargo trailer and trying to get out of Florida. It's just getting too hot here. It was like 93, 94 degrees today. Way too hot for me, even though I have air conditioning and inside of a house. So let me show you the battery. This is what I came up with. It's actually on wheels so that I can roll it around because I'm building it in a house here. Then I'm gonna roll it outside to the cargo trailer. It also makes it easy if I need to pull it out to do any work on it. Um, I work, it's a little bit off the ground here so that uh, it will fit to where the venting and stuff for my diesel heater will be able to pass easily underneath it. And so that's why it's set up that way. Eventually, I'll be purchasing one more set of eight cells here so that this will give me a total of uh, roughly six Battleborn batteries. So that's what I get here. It's going to be, uh, right now I have 400 amp hours at 12 volts. It'll be 600 amp hours at 12 volts. This is a 24 volt system. So at 24 volts, this is 200 right now. And eventually it will be 300. Up here are the BMSs. These are on the sides here. Still need to wire those up. This thing in the middle here is a shunt and this is hooked up to a little hockey puck thing which is a Victron shunt and so it has a Bluetooth module so that I'm able to see the status of my batteries with uh, Bluetooth on my phone. And then this is a master shut off here to turn off the batteries from the rest of the system. Then there will be just a couple of leads coming off of this cart and going up to the panel with the electronics above. So that's about all I have right now for my electrical system. I'll do one more video later with a little bit of show and tell, show you the complete system up and running once it's done, once I have the solar panels and everything is functioning. But uh, right now I am a little bit stressed trying to get everything done to get on the road. And so I'm going to end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future video.